me this afternoon we have got a 2016 Volvo V40 it's a Volvo V40 and we have got a low fuel pressure sensor fault which is this one here which is a P018D00 fuel pressure sensor B circuit high which is I'll show you now that cover off I haven't done the 4240s uh, which is that one there and it is fairly common fault I'm going to show you how to change it now now before we change it I'm going to show you what to look out for on your live, da uh, live data if you go into your fuel uh, your live data and you need to be looking for your fuel pressure low pressure side and the fuel pressure low pressure side required value you click OK and that will give you a required what it should be reading and what it actually is reading we just go in the car now and we give it a little bit of a rev you should see this one on the bottom now which is adjusting itself and that's what I could just said that is the required value and it is reading 10 now if we come around to the pressure sensor itself let me just grab my scanner I'll just plonk that up there for you right in the way there uh, now if we just disconnect it this top one isn't moving at all you see now that is a default pressure you just put it in uh, pretty much like in a limp mode sort of thing when the uh, sensor's failing so let's get involved now and let's get it changed the first thing we need to do is find a fuse and unplug it for the fuel pump now the fuse for this vehicle is in the passenger footwell you need to pull a little plastic cover off the fuse that you need to pull out is that top yellow one Hello. let's see if I can do it it is kind of hard underneath the vehicle give it a pull out and there's a 20 amp top left and there's fuse 56 now what we need to do jump into the driver's side start the engine and let that engine tick over until it cuts out might take a minute might take 10 seconds is it gonna happen it will cut out i hope There we go, just like that. Now we're back underneath the bonnet. Uh, we need to remove the sensor itself. I had previously unplugged the connection on it. And these little plastic clips, they can be a little bit brittle. Don't worry if you break them because you get a new one on the new pressure sensor. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Anyway, they just pop up. Now any excess fuel now, there shouldn't be any in there whatsoever. And if there is, it's gonna be minute and it will evaporate. Once you've undone them two plastic clips, that should just slide off like that. And there we go, that is the brand new one that has turned up, which is a Volvo part, and that is the part number there that you want. Now, as you can see, compared next to the old one, uh, it is slightly modified. I'm going to open that one up and have a little look, see what's in there. Now, I have, does anybody else like that just get distracted by stuff? I was like, I need to open it, so I opened it. Anyway, here we go, I've cut the top off with a standing knife. And I think petrol's been getting in there. You, you're not gonna be able to see this, but I'll take a picture and I will attach it somewhere around the area for you to see. But as you can see in there, it is all groggy. All right, let's get back to fitting the new one. Now, when you order the new sensor, they will send you, or they may ask you, do you want the fuel pipe to go with it? And I've opted for yes. So we're gonna be putting the fuel pipe on it, which goes just down the side of the air, air box, the air intake, you don't really need to take it off, you can just hook it out. And it goes down the back there with two little white clips that you need to get. Um, a little 90 degree pick and just hook it out. Right, let's get to start with. Let's get this new pipe on. Now the actual sensor itself, I don't think it matters which way you put it on. But we're going to put it on with a little tab at the top. It should just click on. Okay, then push the tab stone and plug it in, just like that. Last but not least, do not forget to put your fuse back in. 
back to the top. Can I get it in with my fat fingers? I don't know. We'll have a go. Are we in? Yeah, we are back in. Right, let's put this little plastic cover back on now and then we can get on the key. Now we're in the vehicle with everything connected. Uh, we need to jump around to the ECU, uh, jump around to special function, and then activating the fuel pump in tank. Okay, okay. And then once it's loading up, if you look at this fuel low pressure sign now, KPA, you will see it going up if we press start. And it is going up beautifully. If we just stop it, we can now get on the key and give it a big start, Rooney. But before we start the car, what we're going to do, we're going to just clear the fault codes, give them a read, nothing set. Uh, we're going to jump around to fuel, uh, fuel, uh, read data, uh, fuel. Oh, let me go back. Fuel. We need to go fuel pressure low side and the required for the low side. That's a high pressure, that's a low pressure. Press OK. And as you can see now, we are not far off because we've had it primed. We give it a start. You can see now everything is fluctuating. If we put it into a graph, It is working as it should do. Now we're back underneath the bonnet with the engine running. What we're going to be doing is just checking for leaks and making sure that everything is nice and secure and clipped in. Then we can just put the covers back on. And there you have it, that is all the covers back on and the car is running. Absolutely sweet Aruni. Now what I'm going to do is just take the car down the road for a little bit of a test drive, take my bonnet lamp off and what have you, remove my diagnostic equipment and yeah successfully diagnosed and repaired. Let's get sent.